feel like I got to go wide for this one, guys. Mike's going to stay in the frame today. Okay, we got a lot to talk about and not a whole lot of time to do it in. Avengers Infinity War comes out next week. The culmination of 10 years and 18 films worth of cinematic storytelling for Marvel Studios. The big question that always gets asked with sequels, particularly Marvel sequels, is whether or not a person needs to have seen any of the previous films in a series in order to understand the new film. You know the situation. You take your mother to see the new Godzilla film and she'll probably ask, do I need to have seen all the other Godzilla movies to understand why he's destroying Tokyo this time? With Infinity War, the answer more than ever is yes, you will need to have seen at least some of the previous MCU films in order to understand what's going on in Infinity War. But notice how I said some films. To me, it's not essential to see all 18 movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in order to understand what's going on in Infinity War. Today, I'm going to tell you exactly which films you're going to need to watch before you go see the new movie. Spoilers for the MCU here on out, guys. I mean, obviously. I feel like this can get intense, so I'm gonna take sweatshirt off to get comfortable. To be 100% clear, this is not a list of the best films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you're wondering, I think these are the 10 best in no particular order. Nor is this gonna be a comprehensive summary of every film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What this is, is a list of all the movies that advance the overall plot of the MCU forward toward Infinity War. That means the film either needs to A, contain an Infinity Stone, or B, feature a massive status quo shakeup. Let's just begin today's lesson and hopefully everything will start to make sense. Let's begin with phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Phase one consisted of the following films, Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, and the original Avengers movie. Of these films, it is not important that you see Iron Man 2, nor The Incredible Hulk. Neither film is necessary to the overall story of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nothing major happens that changes the world as we know it, and none of the other films ever harken back to them in any significant way. And be honest, you don't remember anything from The Incredible Hulk, do you? I didn't think so. Some of you probably didn't even remember it was a film. There, I just eliminated two films from your massive binge-watching session. In fact, I'm gonna try to eliminate another one because I don't think Iron Man 1 is all that important either. Now don't get me wrong, it's a great film, and yes, it does introduce Tony Stark into the world, but it doesn't feature any Infinity Stones, and it doesn't have any significant status quo shakeups to the MCU, mainly because it's technically the start of it. You could argue that it is very important because they do mention the fact that Tony Stark announcing he's Iron Man is a plot point in later films, and especially the Nick Fury scene at the end, introducing the concept of the Avengers. But in 2018, if you don't know the Avengers are coming, I can't help you. But you know what, to be fair, I'll put an asterisk next to Iron Man in that it's optional to watch. You don't have to. If you're pressed for time, you don't have to. So that leaves Thor, Captain America, and the first Avengers movie. And if you ask me, those are the three most important phase one films. Thor is the first film in the MCU to set up major cosmic threats. It introduces us to Loki, who's going to become the villain in the first Avengers movie, and shows us his motivations as to why he's doing what he does in the Avengers. And Captain America not only shows us how this World War II legend wound up in the present day, but it also introduces us to the Tesseract, AKA the Space Stone, our very first Infinity Stone. And this stone is also the main MacGuffin in the first Avengers movie, but that's not the only reason why the first Avengers is essential viewing. It also introduces us to the second Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone, in the form of Loki Scepter. And it's our first shot of Thanos, a tyrannical figure who's been hunting these stones and who will continue to hunt them throughout the series. And on top of all of that, this is the film that brings all of the series heroes together and it shows to their universe and really to our universe that these heroes are here and here to stay and that's phase one and now we move on to phase two iron man 3 thor the dark worlds captain america the winter soldier guardians of the galaxy volume one avengers age of ultron and ant-man which ones can you skip well good news all you weirdos who don't like iron man 3 or ant-man you can skip both of them. Neither feature any major status quo shakeups and neither feature any Infinity Stones. I mean, Tony Stark kind of quits at the end of Iron Man 3 and yet he's right back in the thick of things in Age of Ultron, so I would say that's skippable. And yes, not seeing Ant-Man would make his eventual appearance in Civil War feel kind of random, but 
his actions in his solo film don't really affect the world in any major capacity, so I would say you can skip it and be fine. Now, Winter Soldier does have events that shake up the world pretty significantly, but that one you can skip. Now, yes, S.H.I.E.L.D. being infested with Hydra agents and eventually collapsing and Bucky returning from the dead, those are big deals. But the S.H.I.E.L.D. thing is never brought up again. I mean, sure, Nick Fury goes into hiding at the end of the film, but then he shows up in Age of Ultron with Maria Hill and a whole bunch of helicarriers helping the Avengers evacuate Sokovia. Again, like nothing happened. And with Bucky, everything you need to know about him is explained again and explained very well in Civil War. And spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you to watch Civil War. Okay, so that's three phase two films down. What about the rest? Well, Thor The Dark World? Fortunately, that's required viewing. Yes, the quote unquote worst film in the MCU is important to the story of Infinity War because it features an Infinity Stone, the Red Power Stone, AKA the Ether. The whole film is really centered around this element and the power it possesses. Sure, Throw the Dark World may not be top tier Marvel, but it's important in showing what this Infinity Stone is, what it can do, and just where it is in the cinematic universe by the end. But don't worry, because Guardians of the Galaxy, which is top tier Marvel, is the next film you need to see. It features the Power Stone, the purple orb that everybody is chasing after throughout the film's runtime. The Guardians, the Nova Corps, and even Thanos. This is the Mad Titan's biggest appearance in the MCU to date, and it's because of him that Gamora, Nebula, and main antagonist Ronan the Accuser are all on the hunt for the Power Stone. He may not really do much in the film, but it does give you a sense of just what a tyrannical asshole he is. Plus, this film finally explains the Infinity Stones on screen. There's a whole scene with the Collector explaining just what they are, what they do, and why they're so dangerous. And that's a trend that actually continues into Age of Ultron. That weird pool vision that Thor has, that's the first time any of the Avengers of Earth learn about the Infinity Stones in any major capacity. There is a deleted scene from Age of Ultron that goes into a little bit more detail of just what Thor learned in the cave. I kind of wish it stayed in the final movie, but then I guess Joss Whedon wouldn't have gotten his farm time. The only Infinity Stone featured in Age of Ultron is the Mind Stone again, but this time the Mind Stone is used in the creation of Vision. And judging from all the trailers for Infinity War, it looks like Thanos knows that Vision has the Mind Stone. And that is phase two. Now for phase three, Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, and Black Panther. Guardians 2, you can skip. It doesn't really do anything important besides introduce Mantis and explain why Nebula is now all of a sudden on the team. That's not really significant in any real plot capacity for Infinity War, if you ask me. You can also skip Spider-Man Homecoming and Black Panther. Spider-Man Homecoming does tie back to the original Avengers, and it does a really good job of establishing Spider-Man's place in the current MCU, but it doesn't really show his effect on the greater world as a whole. And Black Panther, A, doesn't contain an Infinity Stone, and B, doesn't change the landscape of the MCU in any major significant way. I would say spoiler alert because that just came out, but I mean, I'm sure you all saw it by now. That leaves Thor Ragnarok, Doctor Strange, and surprise, Civil War. Now, Civil War doesn't feature any Infinity Stones. However, what it does do is set up what the state of the Avengers will be at the start of Infinity War. It sets up why half the team is missing or in hiding. It sets up why Captain America has a sick beard and why he's no longer talking to his BFF, Tony Stark. And it actually introduces Spider-Man and Black Panther. All the information you need to know about those characters is in this film. The solo films are really just cool bonus adventures for the two. And from there we move on to Doctor Strange. Now Doctor Strange does introduce some new characters, specifically Doctor Strange and Wong, both are gonna be featured in Infinity War. It expands on the concept of magic in the MCU, not just the weird hand gestures that Scarlet Witch does, but actual magic and spell casting. It's not an ability we see a lot in this series, and I can bet my money that it's gonna be used for some cool stuff in Infinity War, especially when it's used in conjunction with the Eye of Agamotto, which gets revealed at the end of Doctor Strange to be the fifth Infinity Stone, the Time Stone. And finally, we have Thor Ragnarok, the most recent film in the MCU that you need to see. What's interesting about Ragnarok is it winds up functioning as one big prelude 
to Infinity War. The events of Ragnarok lead right into Infinity War almost directly. And while it doesn't really shake up the greater status quo of the greater Marvel Universe, the status quo shakeups it does feature to the Thor mythos are significant enough to warrant a watch. I mean, Thor looks radically different at the end of Ragnarok than he's looked throughout the entire series. And Asgard is destroyed, so I would say that's pretty important to know. And perhaps most importantly of all, this movie features the return of the Tesseract. It's really only a quick cameo, but if you're wondering why Loki has it in the trailers for Infinity War, this movie explains why. And that's it. That is it. The nine films you need to see before you go and watch Infinity War. 10 if you want to include Iron Man 1. This video is being posted on April 18th, 2018, which means that Infinity War comes out nine days after. So I say that gives you a good amount of time to catch up. Maybe watch one or two films a day before you go see Infinity War. You, you'll be fine. So there you have it, my list for the essential Marvel films you need to watch before you go see Infinity War. Did I leave any out? I probably did. Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. In the description below, I put Amazon links to all the films I mentioned. You can buy it on Blu-ray. You can watch it on Amazon Instant Video. Either way, you can get caught up quickly and you would help support this channel. And of course, we have new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern is Wolf Den Live. So make sure you subscribe to see all of that. Like this video and share it with a friend. A friend who needs to get caught up with the MCU films before Infinity War comes out like my dear friend Heather, I didn't forget. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.